Hello guys, uh, this is the Betamax man here. Um, <clears throat> I had a request uh, on a, uh, a YouTuber of mine. They requested that they would like to see um, my movie collection on Laserdiscs that were uh, done in uh, THX. Now, THX um, was a uh, process done, it was a mastering process that was done, that was created by George Lucas um, to improve on not only just sound quality, but video quality as well. Uh, mainly, I think it was mainly for video quality. Uh, so video and sound quality is better. THX really did do a really good job of uh, giving, you know, not only great video but awesome audio as well. He also wanted me to talk a little bit about laser rot and how does it happen um, and why does it happen. Uh, so we're going to discuss those as well. So why don't we take a look uh, at my THX uh, Laserdisc uh, movie titles that I have now. There may be other titles uh, that I have that may have the THX logo on them. Uh, I found all the ones that I, I think I've found every one that I have that has the THX. Usually um, if the THX logo is not printed somewhere on the laser disc, then your disc does not have THX. Um, so we'll start off with uh, two, uh, I have two Disney titles uh, that were done in THX. So let's go ahead and, and show those two Disney titles and then we'll show the rest of the movie titles that were done in THX um, that I have. So this is from my collection of laser discs. Now, I probably have um, almost uh, maybe 50 discs, maybe 50 or more laser discs. I have not actually counted the amount of uh, movie titles. I have on this format, but I do have a lot of movies on this format uh, because this format is something that I love. Um, and a lot of people love Laserdisc. Laserdisc gave you that really good, crisp, clear, sharp image um, and really good quality audio as well uh, because most Laserdiscs had. Uh, two tracks of audio, either analog or had uh, digital audio. Um, a lot of them had both. Uh, so you could choose between the analog soundtrack or the um, digital soundtrack. Typically the digital soundtracks tended to sound better than the analog uh, stereo soundtracks. Now they had AC3 audio and stuff. I mean, they just had a lot of great, great, you know, stuff uh, that Laserdiscs have. Um, AC3, which was an audio that uh, was like the, I believe AC3 is the, the five point 5.0 uh, surround sound. Um, so there's different decoders and stuff that you can buy uh, to decode and receive those uh, Dolby surround sound uh, stereo 
uh, audio, you know, or because uh, they had they had uh, stereo, they had uh, 5.1 surround sound, you know, and there's some other ones too. But I I don't know all of the um, specifications as far as the audio goes. But uh, anyway, let's uh, dive in, shall we? So first off, we have the Lion King, and I actually have the Lion King uh, Simba's Pride on Laserdisc as well, but I didn't bring that out because it doesn't have THX. So these are only uh, THX Laserdiscs that I'm going to show you. And there's the back. Toy Story. And these are the it, these are it on the um, Disney titles with uh, THX. And there's the um, back. Uh, here's the movie that I recently just got. And as you can see, it's got the THX logo right there. It's also got the widescreen logo. And this one is a CAV Standard Play Edition Laserdisc. And there is the back. This was a spectacular film. This particular film really was... An amazing, an amazing uh, film because it really showed just how horrific, horrific, and how bad um, twisters can be. So that one is great. And we have Casper, which was a movie back in the I believe this was mid to late 90s. I remember when this movie uh, came out. And of course, back then, my family was pretty much, we were poor uh, when we moved to Lincoln City. Um, we moved to Lincoln City and jobs were pretty scarce. Good jobs were hard to get, hard to find, and... We were kind of poor, but we weren't able to go to the movie theater. Uh, but when this came out on VHS, um, my dad um, was able to rent it for me. And he rented it, and I was able to watch it. But I remember really wanting to watch this when I was a kid. Oh, I want to watch that. Well, we don't have enough money. Oh man, you know, so as a kid, this movie resonated with me. Uh, this was one of the movies that I really liked and really wanted to see back in the 90s. And there's the back. And again, if it doesn't have the THX logo on it, then it's not been done in THX. To my knowledge, if it's been done in THX, it has to have the uh, symbol. So, the River Wild. I remember watching this one. This was another movie that we rented uh, from the video store. Um, we Actually, there was three locations in Lincoln City that you could rent movies from. Uh, one was Blockbuster, two was Movie Time, and three was the uh, K-Way Campground. Uh, the uh, owner of the, the K-Way Campground, his wife had a little miniature video section that you could rent. You could rent videos, and because my dad was an employee there... He was able to borrow movies from Barbara and take them home and we could watch them and he could bring them back the next day. He had to bring them back like within a day or two. 
that was the rule that you know employees got to have they got to see the movies for free but they had to bring them back within a day or two and I think this was one of the movies on VHS that we watched that I watched that we, we got it from the KOA where my dad borrowed it is the back now here is a, a James Bond film that I really liked now I actually just purchased now this was the uh, this is the widescreen edition this is the letterboxed edition and I just recently bought the pan and scan version of this. That's right. They did have a pan and scan version of this film. And uh, I did uh, borrow it. I actually did um, buy it. So... Um, I have that that will be coming in the mail so we will take a look at it when it comes in the mail but this is the widescreen edition of it and then in the mail we'll have full screen so this is golden eye which was from 19 uh, I believe it came out in theaters in 94 and then 95 it came out on video And there's the back and of course this one has been done in THX and here's everybody's favorite Titanic this was also done in THX and there's the back as you can see the THX logo right there uh, they did a lot of CGI uh, graphics that were done in this film. This film was about a three-hour film, and it was it was a long, long movie, but it was a good one. I actually really liked this movie a lot, and so I had to have it on Laserdisc. Now, this is the widescreen edition. And I am currently looking for the full screen version. Yes, they did have a pan and scan version of Titanic on Laserdisc. We're all familiar with the pan and scan VHSs uh, of this movie, but there were a uh, pan and scan uh, Laserdisc of this. So if you wanted the full screen version, uh, you'll have to hunt for it because I've been searching for a couple years now uh, for this one. Uh, the full screen version have not found it. Uh, I think I found it once, but when I got the money together to buy it, it sold. So, uh, believe it or not, there are people out there that prefer the pan and scan versions and they will pay a high price for the pan and scan versions believe it or not uh, there are a lot of people out there including myself that like the pan and scan and we have the original 60s night of the living dead which is a, a thx master process that was done and uh, as you can see it's got the THX logo there and then there's the back of it Schindler's List which was this talked about about the Nazis uh, that were turning the Jewish people um, were slaves they they basically were forced to work 
for nothing. They were slaves. They were held captive. There were, of course, thousands and thousands of Jewish people died um, because of Adolf Hitler. And uh, so Schindler's List is a movie uh, about that. And in fact, this film was purposely done in black and white. This was not done in color. And I think the reason why they didn't do it in color is one of the reasons that I heard is I heard that it would be too graphic. Um, if you've seen it in color, it would be way too graphic. Because, you know, they show, you know, getting shot in the head and the blood coming out of the head and, and onto the ground and... So they showed a lot of stuff that, that probably was a little bit squeamish, you know. Uh, people that were squeamish, I guess you'd say. Um, but yeah, I talked about the Holocaust, you know, basically. It's just, uh, there's the THX logo right there. That was uh, Schindler's List, and this is the... Letterboxed edition, so it is widescreen. Here is a movie that everybody is uh, familiar with. This is uh, Jurassic Park, and this is done in THX, as you can see the THX logo right there. Like I said, if it doesn't have the THX logo on it, uh, it does not have uh, THX. So, there's that one. And, of course, these are my die-hard uh, films. I have movies 1 through 3 on Laserdisc. So, originally, there were only 3 films. Originally. Uh, and, and these films were from the late 80s, uh, early 90s, and in the 2000s, they done uh, two more Die Hard movies uh, with Bruce Willis. So this is uh, Die Hard with the Vengeance. So we're kind of going backwards with these. Oh yeah, let's show the back of it. Okay. Um, we could show the gatefold, I guess. You guys might want to see the gatefold, so let's just show you the, the gatefold. You guys can see. There's that one. Quite a a neat uh, cover. Die Hard 2, also called Die Harder. There's the back. And we'll take a look at the gatefold. Now these, these were purchased brand new. And they still have the proof of purchase cutout, cardboard cutout, it's still there. Uh, these are to be removed so you can grab the discs and take them out easily. There's the back. And Die Hard, the original Die Hard, uh, number one. Of course, number one is the original, right? With a THX logo. These are widescreen releases. To my knowledge, they never did release the pan and scan version on Laserdisc. The only way to own this movie on Laserdisc was the special widescreen edition. You could not watch. I think I might have another movie called Predator, which was done in THX. So just come to think of it, I'm just starting to think that uh, I think that one had. There was a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger 
And I believe that one had THX as well. But maybe not. Well, let's find. Let's see if that if that's the case. It may not have. No, that's not done in THX, so we're not going to show that, but... I don't know why I was thinking that, but yeah. And there is the gatefold. Now, I have this film on uh, Betamax as well. So I, I own the... Betamax version. Um, I also was thinking about getting the VHS uh, version of it as well. But I'm more of a Betamax and Laserdisc guy. And Judgment Day number two. Terminator 2. This is a THX uh, mastering. This is the uh, special edition. So the special edition is a little bit longer film. The film is uh, a lot longer. And uh, I think it's got an additional 10 or 15 minutes on it. And then there's the back. And they do have, I have both the regular edition and the special edition. And the regular edition probably also has THX. Um, I'm pretty sure the other one does too. But I also have, so I have the special edition widescreen and the special edition pan and scan, which is the full screen. So I have that. And this one's got a gatefold, of course. So let's just get this. And there's the gatefold. And this one had a little cardboard. Uh, there was a, a sheet of paper that had some writing on it from the uh, director of the film, which is pretty cool. I just recently got the widescreen version of the special edition. Here's the Return of the Jedi. This is the Star Wars trilogy. It's got the THX. We'll take a look at the back. Pretty much everybody has probably seen these. These. This was the first time that you could see this film uh, done in uh, THX. And then there you got a picture of the one of the old Republican Republic ships. The old Republic. And then the destroyed uh, Death Star. That was destroyed. And then there's that. And we'll take a look at the Empire Strikes Back. So let's take a look at that. Here's the front. There's the back. And we'll show you the, the gatefold there. Now we have uh, Star Wars A New Hope. And originally it was just called Star Wars. Originally uh, the new Ho A New Hope did not uh, be put on to this film until uh, the uh, early 
1980s. Uh, the title was put on to the uh, intro before the movie started. And there's that. And I have, I just recently got the Star Wars Special Edition uh, VHS box set that I just got. That's been done in THX. And then we have, finally, The Phantom Menace. Episode 1, Star Wars. So, George Lucas was the creator of uh, THX. If I remember correctly, I believe he was the creator of THX. So, there we go. There's those. And then, uh, stay tuned and we'll talk a little bit about Laser Rot, uh, why it happened, and uh, how it happened. And uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that. So let's talk about that. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about laser rot. And here's what I have here. This is a uh, MCA Disco Vision uh, title. This is uh, Jaws 2. And it just so happens that um, this particular disc does have disc rot. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, Disco Vision titles were actually some of the very first uh, Laserdisc uh, titles uh, that were available. And uh, later on, they had two or three names, uh, maybe more than that. But there was uh, Disco Vision, uh, Laser Vision, and uh, Laser Disc. So there was a, f a few names, but uh, eventually, by the by the late 80s and all of the 1990s, uh, it was named Laser Disc, and that was the name that uh, was pretty much stayed with the format until the end in the year 2000. <clears throat> Sometimes you can see the actual laser rot on the disc, and sometimes you can't. Now, disc rot does occur with um, laser discs. Now, there are some people that will say that there were a lot of di titles, there were a lot, a lot of discs that had... Uh, laser rot and it was a very common problem and they, it sucked and all that and I'm like that's bullshit because this format yes there were some discs that had rot suffered from rot um, but I would say out of all the discs that I own I think I have about one or two discs that have laser rot and um, one of them was actually so severe that uh, the picture was unwatchable the sound was staticky and it just wasn't watchable but I would say laser rot probably happens within about you know 20 20% chance of getting a disc with laser rot. Maybe even less than that. Now, I have probably 100 titles, close to 100 titles, and I've only got two of them that have rot. Uh, well, no, I've got three. I've got... Because I, I got a copy of... Uh, no, I have four. Because it was on Golden Pond which I had to rebuy uh, because it had disc rot. Uh, and then there was um, Charlotte's Web, which Charlotte's Web has laser rot, which you can still watch the movie, but the um, sound quality is a little poor, and the video quality is definitely uh, bad, but... Uh, 
And then I have this one and then Backdraft, which is one that I got. But I rebought Backdraft. I bought it a second time and the second time has no disc rod. So it just really depends. But what causes laser rot? How does it happen? What what's going on here? What's 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 the deal with laser rot? Now, let's take a look at one of the discs. Now, let's see. I think disc 2 might be the worst off. So, let's pull disc 2 out. And we'll see if we can see any disc rot. Because sometimes you can see the disc rot and sometimes you can't. Um, sometimes there'll be like a little black speck, or you can see dots on the disc. Eh, this one doesn't really have any visible signs. Sometimes you can see the disc rot, sometimes you can't. And this one doesn't really have any signs of uh, showing it. Um, other than maybe there's a one little speck on there. That you can see this little speck. Um, but uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and talk about laser rot. What is laser rot? Well, that is when the laser cannot read, can no longer read the material on the disc. So what what exactly happens to these laser discs that cause them not to play and cause them to have rot? Now there are two reasons for this. One reason could be that the problem is caused by the actual making of the disc. And two can be caused by the glue over time deteriorating and showing through the reflective surface of the disc. And when that happens, the laser can no longer uh, read the data that's on the disc. It can no longer recognize a signal because the aluminum coating that is literally sprayed on the disc. This aluminum coating that you see here um, is basically what allows the laser to uh, reflect the, the, the signal. So without this aluminum coating, the signal cannot be uh, reproduced, cannot be um, used basically so I don't know all of the um, mechanics of how a laser disc is made I don't know every single layer but I do know this I do know that the there's a there's pits and grooves in the disc and the information is stored in those pits and grooves. Now this is a, a CAV disc, so you can, you know, really see the the little lines and stuff that's in the disc, but uh, little little pits and stuff that the anyway. But to make a long story short. They have the um, silver coating, the aluminum coating, which allows the laser to hit it and reflect back. So, um, and I know that the information is stored in these little pits and grooves in the disc. And the, the laser has to read that but so the aluminum coating and then what they do is they take side A and side B 
has to be glued together. So the two discs, as you can see, there are two physical discs that are glued together. And it's hard to see on camera. But I can see by the naked eye, I can see that there are two separate discs. Um, because they had to be, they had to have the, both sides had to have information stored on it. You could only hold up to 60 minutes per side. Some of the, like the, the Disco Vision discs, these were recorded in CAV format, which was constant angular velocity, which could only hold 30 minutes per disc. So this particular, um, this whole section here, uh, this particular one holds 30 minutes per side. So usually you would have anywhere from two to three discs if you were um, watching a movie on the CAV standard play format. And then you have CLV, which is constant linear velocity, which is uh, 60 minutes per side. So you could fit a full hour on one side. But the discs, you know, they had to be this big um, because they had to be able to have, they had to have enough, um, enough disc there to record and store the information. Now, believe it or not, laser discs are analog. The video signal is analog. However, later on in the 19 by the 1980s, they had two audios that could be they had analog uh, stereo audio and then they had digital audio which could be stereo uh, it could have surround sound um, which you know there's a lot of different you know things but mainly there, there was the video was always analog so the video is constantly and it's only analog on laserdisc the audio could be either analog or digital um, they offered both usually they would offer both uh, audio tracks either analog or digital now they could also store two different tracks of audio like Let's say audio one would have the the uh, audio to the movie, and audio two would have the commentary, where basically somebody was talking about the movie while you were watching the movie. But uh, anyway, so we're gonna get back to the um, laser rod. This is what I know. When they were spraying on the different um, chemicals in the making process, sometimes there would be dust fart particles, fine dust or dirt particles that would get in between the layers, uh, the chemical layer that was laid down onto the plastic disc because the the surface of the disc is plastic. This is a plastic disc. Behind the plastic, you see you've got your aluminum uh, coating. And uh, so anyway, but that dust uh, was called, that was disc rot caused by manufacturing. And basically, <clears throat> the information could not be read by the laser. Then there's the other problem, the problem that happened over time, where 
the disc has disc rot now, but when it was first made, it didn't have it. It did not have disc rot when it was first made. Well, okay. Then that's caused by age has deteriorated the disc and it is no longer, and it's got disc rot. So there's disc rot caused by the making and disc rot caused by the aging process that happens to these discs. And no, touching the disc does not hurt the disc. I don't recommend it because you got fingerprints on the disc. But believe it or not, the laser can read the information off the disc even if there's fingerprints on it. Now, on a DVD, DVDs are a lot more sensitive. I can just spot. I just could spot something. There was a spot here. It's not showing up on camera, but I could see the laser rod right in this area. Yeah, sometimes you can see it by like this. It's got like a, a small section that's dull looking, so it's no longer shiny in this particular area. Sometimes you'll see like a little, uh, like a black little dot. You know, like a little speck. And it looks like dirt, but then you wipe it and you realize it's not dirt. It's laser rot. Sometimes you can see laser rot on the discs. And, and sometimes you can't. So, But the aging process that happens is where, like I said, that glue goes bad. And it starts to deteriorate. And... The glue starts to show, come through to the other side of the uh, disc, the aluminum part. And it just, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, yeah, there's, there's two, two things right there that cause it. Either the making or age, and those are your two causes of disc rot and I know I've said this now multiple times sometimes I do tend to repeat myself and I do apologize for that I don't I don't mean to repeat uh, myself all the time but um uh, anyway so yeah those are your two causes of disc rot and like I said I can see right in here you'll see a dull spot you see that right here where my finger is you can see it even on camera you should be able to see this but it's a dull spot it's dull looking that's where the glue has deteriorated and start to show through the reflective surface of the disc I don't think that this disc has rot because of the manufacturing I think it has rot because of, the, of its age. Now there is that question. Will your discs eventually not work? That's a possibility. Uh, another 10, 20 years down the road, discs that don't have rot may have rot. And Will they not play it in 10, 20 years? That's a possibility, you know. Um, but I will say this. That these discs are old enough to where if you've got a disc that does not have disc rot in any way, there is no disc rot, there is absolutely zero disc rot on your disc will that disc continue to play yes okay the disc deteriorates when the disc rot occurs so if there is no disc rot that disc will continue to play and it will continue to work but will the glue deteriorate 
later. It's a possibility. That's why you'll see people and you'll hear people talk about digitizing uh, their, not only their videotapes, but digitizing their laser discs. Because you spent so much money on them, and, and some of the discs have movies that were never put out on DVD or never put out on Blu-ray. Um, so, there is value in Laserdiscs, but one of the reasons why I love Laserdiscs is the uh, album size cover. The cover art is really what attracts me to the Laserdisc format. Another thing that attracts me to it is the fact that this is a gigantic 12 inch disc which is the same exact size as a record now I have laser discs I also have CEDs which are basically a vinyl record with video as well as sound but laser disc is definitely one of my favorite formats you know, in 20 years, will my collection of discs continue to play in 20 years from now? I don't know. Only time will tell. But right now, I'm going to enjoy these discs as long as I can. I'm going to enjoy this format. As long as I can and as much as I can. I love this format. It's the same way with any other old format. Such as Betamax or VHS. Okay, because there's a lot of VHS people out there. I'm not one of them. I am a beta fan. I am a beta file. Okay. I'm for the beta format. Sorry, my battery died. So, I'm a beta file, you know. I'm a beta guy. And I'm a laser disc guy. And I'm a CED guy. My three formats that I have that I love... The first format that I love and will continue to love even after it becomes extinct is Betamax. The second, Laserdisc. The third, CED. Those are the three dead formats that I absolutely love and will continue to love for years to come. So don't give up on your collecting laser discs because these discs are cool. They're nostalgic. They 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 bring back great memories from not only my childhood but my adulthood as well. One of the other reasons why people get into the laser discs is because we can get the altered, unaltered version trilogy. Star Wars original trilogy, unaltered. The original theatrical release that is on laser disc, that is not on. Uh, DVD or Blu-ray. If there aren't the DVDs and the Blu-rays of the Star Wars original trilogy, they were changed. So if you want to get into this format because of the fact that you can get the original theatrical version of Star Wars trilogy, do so. That's one of the reasons why I got into this format. 
is because I knew I can get the unaltered original theatrical trilogy of Star Wars. And even the prequel trilogy George Lucas tampered with. Uh, the Phantom Menace has been nest with. Attack of the Clones. Um, Revenge of the Sith. Um, it's They've been tinkered with by George Lucas. Now George felt that he was making good changes. He didn't feel that the changes were bad like we do. But that's one of the main reasons why I got into Laserdisc. But the other reason is, you know, I knew what it was when I was a kid. Like I said, my dad wanted one, but he couldn't afford one. Uh, you know, because my dad knew that these discs had superior picture. These discs have far superior picture and sound quality than conventional home videotape recording systems. So I have babbled on long enough um, about the laser discs and so laser rot that is the most way that I can describe what laser rot is. Where the laser can no longer read the material. And Disco Vision titles, there were a lot of Disco Vision discs that had laser rot caused by the manufacturing process because they were not always air filtered. The Pioneer, when Pioneer took over the format, they used air quality controlled rooms. They used rooms that had special filters that could eliminate all the dust. So they would be able to eliminate about 99% of any dust in the air they could put it into a filter. So that when they were making the discs, no dust would get in between the manufacturing process. So there we go. So there is my THX laser discs, and we're talking about laser rot, as as asked by a fellow YouTuber of mine. So if you guys have any more uh, requests, just let me know in the comments. I don't check my comments every day. I check them about every other day or every two to three days. So please don't get upset with me if you leave a comment and it takes me a day or two or maybe three or four days to read the comment and respond. I Again, I don't always respond right away. And I actually had a subscriber that got really mad at me because I didn't respond right away. And all I could say to that person is, hey, I'm sorry, but I do have a life and I can't always be glued to my computer looking at every single comment that's made within the hour. So, if you're one of those people that complain, I'm sorry, but I can't always get to the comments as quick as you would like them. But I will try and make sure that I answer all the comments that do come in. It just might take me a while to do so. So anyway, that is going to end this video and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. And always Either be kind and rewind, or be kind and watch a laser disc. And yeah, that comment made no sense. See you later. Bye bye.